for students who are new to conducting oral histories, I think there's a few uh, tips to keep in mind. One is to make sure to make the environment as comfortable as possible for the interviewee. Um, as much as you can, set up the equipment that you need beforehand. Keep the equipment to a minimum. Uh, perhaps you only need an audio recorder sitting on the table between the two of you. Maybe you want you know, one camera off to the side. Um, but as much as possible, frame it as a conversation. And you know that conversation can take twists and turns. It's good to have some questions in front of you that you know you want to ask, but the most important thing is to listen to what they're saying and to react. So maybe not following you know, question one, question two, but they might say something that sparks your interest and you know, well, tell me that story that you, that you mentioned. So allowing the conversation to take a natural track is the way that you're going to really unveil um, some truths and some surprises. I think going with one thing that Hannah was saying about comfort and in making sure that your equipment doesn't make the experience feel too unnatural, um, if the person is willing, uh, try to do this in their home or try to do it in a place that's very comfortable to them. When we have to go out and put ourselves into unfamiliar locations, especially if we're talking about difficult things, but if we're talking about anything personal, and if we're talking about oral history, it's probably something personal. Um, that's going to be easiest if we're in a place that's very comfortable to us. It is the case today with uh, modern HDSLR cameras that you can film effectively in a, a wide range of environments. You don't need lighting. Uh, you can do this with uh, a, a wide open window essentially acting as your key light, as, as the term goes, as a nice big bright light. Um, it's actually especially useful if uh, it's a cloudy day outside because you get this kind of flat lighting that doesn't have uh, white balance challenges and um, doesn't have uh, the, the, the difficulties of you know, direct sunlight kind of blinding people. So there, there are ways in which you can basically walk into somebody's home with a camera that you can hold in your hand, put it on a simple lightweight tripod, sit by a nice window in somebody's comfortable chair in a room that they're, they're in all the time, feel very safe in. That is an ideal setup for a quality oral history interview. The person is comfortable, they're going to be more likely to tell you a, a really good story, a, a story that uh, goes in all the directions you might want it to go, and you haven't made of their space something artificial and unnatural and un unsettling with tons and tons of gear. I think it can be hard to know where to start with an oral history, and I think one good way to help frame a conversation is to ask them to provide some photos or some mementos, have something for them to look at and refer to um, versus trying to think of stories off the top of their head. Yeah, we have to keep in mind that people are not actors. The, the people that we sit down for oral history interviews with, they're not actors and so they, you, they can't just start. Um, and so I, I, to, to your point, maybe the, the biggest thing uh, that people need to keep in mind doing an oral history interview, and it's what historians keep in mind as well. You're going to be most effective if you're really curious about this stuff. You've got to be really curious. You've got to be full of questions. If I sit here and ask you questions about your morning, you're going to tell me a lot more than if I just say, well, how was your morning? Mm -hmm. And the same thing with an oral history interview, the same thing with a historical essay. You've got to be full of questions. And if you are, and if you're able to connect with a person in, in a way that's very real. Um, I, I think that that's crucial again. We're, we're all just people. And if you come in with um, uh, an excessive uh, sense or tone of formality or a long list of, of questions that you're clearly kind of going down one by one and marking off, that's going to feel more like an interrogation. If you can have a conversation with somebody, keep it real, you can have a good oral history interview. I think part of that too is not being afraid to share your own experience mm -hmm. and to not only make it a one-way conversation where you're asking all the questions, but say, oh man, that reminds me of something that my grandmother said to show that you're willing to share as well and make it, make it a true conversation. Yeah.